Chief Nursing and Midwifery Officer of the Chief Nursing and Midwifery Office of the Northern Territory. Please join me in welcoming Mish. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to those both in the auditorium and those at home. Uh, Karen, it wasn't my decision to deliberately come over here because you made that statement. I had planned all along to come to this, so thank you. <laughs> I just would like to start off by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, and that's the Larrakia people, and pay my respect to their elders past, present, and emerging and those recognise those First Nation people who are with us today, either here in the auditorium or online. So as I was saying, welcome to the Northern Territory. We're very privileged as NT nurses to have you here with us and we do hope that you're enjoying what Darwin has to offer as well as what you're able to uh, obtain from attending this conference. Here in the Territory, we enjoy an enviable laid-back lifestyle with amazing weather, excellent career opportunities, short commutes in our cities, spectacular displays of outback starry skies and beautiful tropical sunsets, which I'm hoping that you've all had the opportunity to enjoy. We have an amazing community spirit, welcoming newcomers with enthusiasm. Many people in the Territory have moved here from somewhere else. It's an easy place to meet people and an easy place to make friends. I just want to talk a little bit about the, the Northern Territory and our health services. Here in the Northern Territory, our acute health services are provided through six facilities, two which sit here in Darwin, one in Alice Springs, one at Tenner Creek, one in Catherine and one in Gove. The two largest hospitals, as I'm sure you probably are aware, are here in Darwin, the Royal Darwin and Palmerston Hospital with 367 beds, and Alice Springs Hospital with 183 beds. Our primary health care is extensive and is provided in 74 primary health centres, including clinics run by Ab Aboriginal community controlled health organisations. NT Health care accounts for 27% of the NT government's budget. And as you can see from our slide, nearly 50% of our population resides in remote or very remote areas. And we have some challenges with increasing prevalence in relation to chronic conditions, as many of the rest of you probably do. What does our NT health workforce look like? So here, like most jurisdictions, nursing is the largest workforce profession within NT Health and represents 38% of employees, achieving an 8% growth since 2019. NT Health partners with Aboriginal community controlled services, other government services and non-government services. Together, we aim to ensure the delivery of health care improves the health outcomes of Territorians. So what's it like being a nurse or a midwife in the NT? There are so many exciting opportunities in the Northern Territory, from providing experience in tropical diseases and unique injuries, to caring for Australians who have the highest rates of chronic disease. NT nurses gain a breadth of exposure, including opportunities for humanitarian deployment. My journey to becoming a nurse and a midwife in the NT started back in the early 90s when I had the privilege of working remotely alongside amazing Aboriginal health workers in both Utopia, which is in Central Australia, and then Groot for a short time. I genuinely do not recall any really structured orientation, induction, and very limited educational support to transition. But more likely, here's the keys to the troopy. We'll see you later on. Luckily, the informal community mentoring which existed was ever present. So can you imagine my surprise some 20 plus years later to find myself in a senior leadership role as the NT Chief Nursing and Midwifery Officer? And an even bigger surprise to those in my original hospital group as one attendee I met yesterday who I haven't seen for 30 years stated Amazing, given the shaky start. 
In that period of time that passed, I think I ever had a robust, let alone a basic career plan, or at least one that was documented. I reflected on the concept of fear and courage that Sonia so clearly articulated to us all on Wednesday, and see the pivotal moments or jump off points in my health leadership journey related to opportunity, small and big. I was often scared, yet search for courage to take advantage of those opportunities. Amanda has so eloquently talked about her jump off points. I want to now give you some examples of the type of jump off points we have uh, from new graduates that change our life and our leadership. So if I start off, uh, as a new grad from a hospital midwifery program, the now ex-Commonwealth Chief Nurse directed me to join the Policy and Governance Committee at the hospital. I really had no interest and did not realise then, until much later, that it would be a long link with what I now know as governance. Undertaking a master's degree, fearful that I would not be academic enough, yet realising to make a difference, further education was required. Followed by that, taking a role working for the New South Wales Chief Nurse and Midwife as her maternity and child health advisor, and being truly mortified when my first few briefs, papers, were returned painted with red pen corrections. And to now, as I track and suggest document changes for my new team members, I try and ensure that they see this as the development to assist in their leadership roles to the future. Arriving in Brisbane shortly before a political promise to fund a new mother's hospital and suddenly finding myself needing to write a service summary. Thank goodness for the internet and colleagues as I had no idea how to even begin writing that document let alone articulating the models of the care that we would establish moving forward and the transformation that was required. It also involved setting up consumer groups, now called co-design. Acting as the commander in the emergency management framework to move the whole of that hospital in a day and then commission a new hospital was all overwhelming. Following on from there, moving to the Middle East for over five years to an entirely new culture to assist in transformation of a system delivering over 20,000 babies a year in one tertiary hospital, one regional hospital, and one very small regional hospital, to then cover roles in operations and corporate, including the chief nurse and midwife uh, as an interim role in that very large system with 15 hospitals and primary care. I've had the opportunity to work in quality and safety roles, including the leading of accreditation both here in Australia and internationally when I was working in Qatar. And the governance required and the importance of meeting minimum safety and quality standards were embedded. In these roles, you have other opportunities that may not be discreet to nursing and midwifery, and one of the last things I had to do when I was at the MARTA was negotiate a new enterprise agreement, like our nursing awards, for visiting medical officers. So you can imagine the fear I had walking into that room to begin those negotiations. And finally, returning back to Australia and Darwin in January 2020, in the hope that I could contribute in a tangible and meaningful way to both the nursing profession in the Northern Territory and Territorians accessing our care. Becoming a nurse and midwife in the NT in an entirely different way from my last residency as a remote nurse. Fast forward a couple of years and many significant changes. I'm proud of the leadership displayed by emerging and executive leaders working with their teams and collaboratively to gain significant achievements for the NT nursing profession. Just want to change tilt a little bit now and just talk a little bit about strategic leadership and the importance of that. As we all know, leadership is integral to the nursing profession, demonstrated by it being, being embedded within global, national and local strategies. 
This demonstrates the needs for nursing leaders to be supported into key positions, to advance the nursing profession, to deliver major priorities, and most importantly, to empower our nurses. By investing in leadership development of our nurses and midwives, we can positively influence organisational outcomes. Identifying and developing nursing leaders is crucial to care with appropriate identification, support and development of future nurse leaders, excellence in person-centred care can be achieved. Now, remembering the strategies to develop, enhance and grow nursing leadership, I want to talk about one of my professional colleagues and one of my greatest friends in Qatar and how with the Health Minister's vision, the government's commitment and by implementing these various strategies along with her capabilities and characteristics, transformational change occurred. My colleague was supported to complete her nursing in a country where there is still stigma related to Qatari women undertaking this type of profession. With a nursing workforce of about 18,000 and 1% being Qatari. The provision of in-country education has facilitated the growth of the number of Qatari women now being up to undertake nursing. Nadia completed her nursing, married and had a number of children, completed her masters and has successfully worked her way to an executive role where she leads the provision of community care for both the extremely wealthy, and I mean extremely royal, and the vulnerable. She now has authority in her senior role and continues to develop future leaders, implements models of care to meet current and future needs of the population, and both her and her team are building a professional and skilled workforce with access to education, research and advocacy, all aligned with the organisation's values of safe, effective and kind. Having said that, her achievements have been gained while covered. And some of us here today may have some assumptions in relation to this and may figuratively draw comparison to being masked. Yet she has the respect from the highest political levels in the country and is able to implement genuine change. The change that she's able to implement is related to traits that she has as a nursing leader. Her approach, she has appropriate interpersonal skills and knowledge, wisdom and experience, and demonstrated alignment with the values of the organisation. She is approachable, has high integrity, is motivated, transparent, fair, has wisdom, and most importantly, adaptability. Already possessing traits of a leader, yet further enhanced by her opportunity in relation to education, and leadership opportunities. Her influence is massive. Uh, she has very positive social interactions and relationships across, uh, the, uh, across the scope of the country. And she does this both formally and informally with great courage. She inspires others. She displays role modeling behavior. She's a strategic thinker. She communicates well, and she builds and sustains a supportive culture. And most importantly, she is reflective. Across now to nursing leadership within NT Health. And I don't intend to read all of the elements on this slide, it's for your information. But when I reflect on this leadership and themes of the conference, we here in the NT are aligned with the four pillars of cultural change, innovation, quality, safety, and supporting our workforce. Some of the key initiatives that have been influenced by strong nursing leadership across the NT include alignment with organisational values, which are safe, responsive, and kind, supporting the wellbeing of our nursing, commencing remote safety reviews, sepsis paths, education, upskilling into mental health and creating nurse practitioners positions. And within the last two years, we've tripled the number of nurse practitioner positions we have in the territory 
We have now about 34. <clears throat> NT Health has developed a number of career pathways to facilitate and ensure that we continue to grow the profession of nursing. These career pathways provide entry points for all nurses and midwives throughout their career, from undergraduate, graduate and postgraduate opportunities. There's a pathway for everyone. Investing in our profession not only builds individual nurse capability and capacity, it ensures safe, quality, evidence-based care is provided to our consumers. One way NT Health invests in our profession is through dedicated employed model programs. Currently, we have specialist pathways that include intensive care, perioperative, emergency, mental health, midwifery, renal, neonatal intensive care. We have a new and exciting opportunity that's been developed over the last six months which is a transition from acute care into primary care and remote via a dedicated two-year program in which people rotate through urban clinics, outreach teams, remote clinics, and while completing a postgraduate certificate in remote or primary health. This paves the way to becoming a nurse practitioner either in remote or acute settings. The prospect of career advancement and leadership opportunities is one of the significant advantages for the nurses coming to the Territory. I thought I would like to take advantage of this time during our talk to succinctly talk about the role of the Chief Nurse and Midwife and the office that supports that role. The Office of the Chief Nurse and Midwife here in the Territory draws on best practice and evidence-based nursing and midwifery standards to support professional and career development for NT nurses and midwives. Provides high level evidence and leadership on nursing and midwifery professional workforce and policy matters across NT Health. We achieve this through engagement, partnership and collaboration with nurses and midwives, education providers, as well as consumers and other key stakeholders to continue to improve service delivery across NT Health. With the NT Health executive leadership team and the NT government, the Chief Nursing Midwifery Office is responsible for identifying strategic workforce initiatives that will develop and support NT nurses and midwives and in collaboration with services. The office has been restructured over the last couple of years to further enhance and provide opportunities for our developing leaders so that one or two year rotations or secondments are possible. The office has also ensured to provide extra opportunities for less senior roles. So while we now have a deputy uh, and a senior nursing and midwifery advisor, we have other roles for those who are emerging leaders to participate and understand policy, politics, and the more professional uh, issues that we might be facing. This will also ensure that we maintain and sustain the development of nurses and midwives across NT Health. I've enjoyed the first couple of days of the conference and I'd like to thank the Australian College of Nursing uh, for the invitation to join you today and thank you all for listening. Oh. One more thing I better say or I'll be in trouble from the office is you're welcome to come and join us. Uh, we've got a booth down in the exhibition centre. If you're online, uh, we've got some uh, links there for you to join us as well. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mish. If I wasn't already busy elsewhere, I'd come and work for you. I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank Please you. join me in thank you.